Betty is kind of like our racetrack mum. She's always looking out for myself and Dave and the whole crew and the whole team. She's always got our best interests at heart. So my father said, well, we're in the western suburbs and we're standing in an empty field. Let's call it Westfield. It doesn't affect me. I'll press on. Yeah, Baz, is, um, he'll tell you how it is. If you're doing a shit job, he'll tell you you've done a shit job. It's such a hard day, such a hard weekend. I'd love to win a race, love to get a podium, love to get some silverware. Anton Di Pasquale, he's making the run down to turn eight. Breathe off the throttle. Oh, he grabs the he's in the, he's in the wall. Can I hit the fan? That's all right, that's all right. Sorry. The Ford Mustang makes it two from two on debut. This is how she wakes up in the morning. I love my girlfriend. She always makes me smile, no matter what time of the day I see her, no matter how bad I go on the track, she always makes me smile. OK, so our apartment is full of some weird, quirky things. And as you can see, the very first thing that would catch your eye is printed up. For weeks, it scared me, but now I kind of like love it because it's Good talking point for how. Originally, I wanted to send, just send it to my old man as like a joke present, and then I liked it so much that I kept it for myself. <laughs> David obviously collects all his cars, all the cars that he's driven. I actually don't know what's in here. I don't know, baby. What is the Michelin Man? What is that? Uh, I think I stole that from the Porsche night one night. I have a feeling that's what our baby would look like. <laughs> So she was a grid girl back in the Bolo days in 2012. Um, I met her then and she was trying to set me up with the other grid girl. No, 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 no. I was a grid girl and then he was actually interested in the other grid girl because I had a boyfriend. So I tried to set him up with the other grid girl and um, that didn't work out. Her. And then a few months later, we somehow got together. David, we're not my hero and I want your babies. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, wait, 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 wait. No, he doesn't want to. Oh, we're, both, we're both nuts. People that know me were like, oh, I just don't know who would put up with you and like that. <laughs> and then they meet David and they're like, oh, we get it now. You guys true, are like very it? similar. Yeah. He doesn't, see, he's hating life. I'll hating life. Love you. Just Love do a charge video of you fighting. Charge through the field. Wow. Oh, wow, that's it. What the photo, girls? What are you wearing tonight, Dave? I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Probably a suit with some nice. description. Depends which is clean, I suppose. Well, that looks nice, Moose. Put a ring on it. No. She doesn't want to get married anyway. She does. I really don't. She does. Yes, she do. I honestly don't want to get married. This is the oh, outfit. Okay. Looks like you're open but for business. But it's still... Oh my god, can I punch him? <laughs> okay, Looks like you're going to an upper class funeral. Doesn't it? <laughs> Can you come and help me? This is why you get ready early. But you were ready for like lunchtime. Happy smooth? Happy. What is that material? Oh, it's good, isn't it? Ow. You're right. She always runs into shit. Hurry up! Hang on, they're dirty. It's a bit shiny. Hurry up. Do we need accreditation? Do you know who you are? The other night we were talking and he was like, I said something about Big Brother. He was like, let it go. It was five years ago. I'm like, and then he said something about Bath. I'm like, let it go. That was two years ago. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Note that it doesn't take five minutes, he says five minutes, it takes 20 minutes, just so you know. How long did it take you to get ready? 
Only two hours. <laughs> but I'm ready. I got ready in time. I know my situation. Well, I had to make dinner. You could have been a good You didn't have to. We get a bed at the event. There's food at the event. Yeah, oh, food so annoying. You will scrub up my Alright, let's go. So round three of the championship, we head to Tasmania, one of the most spectacular and scenic parts of Australia. We're at Simmons Plains Raceway, located 30 kilometres outside the city of Launceston. The most exciting part about heading to Simmons Plains is the fans that turn out. They love their motor racing in Tasmania. Simmons Plains for me is, it really is one out and one back. It's a short circuit which offers really tough strategic decisions, very easy to go a lap down. And for the fans, you know what's great about it? When you have 50 second laps, high frequency of your favourite punters going past, that's always a good thing. It all looks very simple but it's, it's one of these places, a little bull ring, where there's just no rest time. And the breaking down at turn four, you know, how late you're on the brakes and how precise and millimetre perfect you need to be to get that right is, is just one of those, those things that you either thrive on or you let it get to you and you falter. Heading to Tasmania, um, it's fundamentally been a Holden track the last 10 years, so hopefully the Holdens can go quite good there. But last year we missed the podium, we ended up fourth, so we're hoping for a podium result this year. Um, we've had a, a lot of ups and downs to start the year, so Tasmania will be one where we try and nut down and sort of achieve a really good race result. Uh, it was probably my worst round in 2018, so we have a lot to, to prove and redeem ourselves from the year before. Car nine, four tyres only. Car nine, four tyres only, six man stop. So Dennis's crew chief is um, pretty much making sure that um, the mechanical side of the car is right. Dennis is uh, like a team manager role with me too. So um, yeah, we've, we've both got our own strengths and Dennis is really good on everything on the car. He knows everything about everything on the car and everything's got to go through him and um, make sure that it's getting done properly. I love Dennis. Dennis is great. Dennis is great. Okay, check your lights, check your lights. Quick pit stop, tyres only. Quick pit stop, tyres only. Hit the board, hit your marks. Hit the board, hit your marks. And Dennis is a, is a great bloke, he's a good, he's a good team leader. Um, and that's a very vital role. So what was, what, stop, what was the issue? What was the issue? And which corner? That one. You gotta hold it tight. You just gotta squeeze the fuck out of it. So, is that on now? So you're right, B1? You're right? Yeah, just the nuts are hard to damage. The what? The nuts are damaged. Yeah, yeah. It's the third time though. Dude, I can't get the wheel any, the wheels, I wouldn't even hold the wheels, that's straight on there. He's like really passionate about racing, knows it back to front, and, and just wants to win probably more than any of us. Every time we make any mistake, it's frustrating. You know, like you get pissed off about it. And I don't know if it's because we're a younger group of people that the, the reason why they made mistakes and pissed off is because we do perfect practice, then in a race it's not that good. If it's a pressure or a situation that they're stressing too much and they're making a mistake, I'm not too sure. So Wayne, Wayne is the problem? Uh, is Wayne the problem? No, it wasn't the problem. I just, just where I had the wheel. Obviously, I collected it on the way and it knocked it behind me. Yeah. And then I was stuck. Well, no. Telling you guys, we've got to fix every problem. Don't just, just. Yeah. But everyone has their little issue. But something B B1 is something you're doing or something wrong with your socks 100. percent But I doubt it's the sockets because three times you've. Sockets and nuts, guys. Well, nuts, whatever. The wheel. That's where I'm going to well, it's your, your corners done it three or four times in the last, no, two times yesterday. The pit stop is a very hard thing. Changing the wheels is actually quite hard. People think it's easy, it's not. So, um, to do it, and to do it under pressure is even harder again, because when a mistake happens, so, yeah.
Track walks are one of those things you love or hate, and I think most people hate them. Mate, I don't know. Tracks for racing, not for walking, so I've, I've never done them. I think it's more of a bonding session. It's my party trick, yeah. yeah. Now the party's put, you just put your leg on the table. Watch this, Get fellas. Get the wax out, girls. Wax me legs, go on, have a go at it. If you want to go for a walk, take your dog. Turn four, one of the great corners in Australian motorsport. Why? Because you barrel down here at 245 k's an hour, and this is 50. This is the slowest corner we go to. Fair drop. It is, isn't it? Every year. It doesn't feel like it, eh? Every year you come back and like, actually, no, this is pretty stiff. No. Don't even notice it, I reckon. Good chat. Good chat. Hey, mate. Yeah. <laughs> hey, mate what do you want? It's cold. <laughs> Can't handle the weather. Not at all, no. <laughs> Autograph sessions can be really fun or, you know, a bit of a drag. Meet some really interesting people, some really fun, funny people. And I like to, like, engage with the, with the fans and talk a bit of shit with them and see what's going on. When you go to a really hot round, everyone sweats and smells and they come and like stink on you. And this is the good thing about being at a cold round. There's no, there's no smell, no sweat. So that bit's fun, as long as you've got the energy to do it and you're not stressing out about the race or you know, you had a bad session and you're thinking about that. You know, if you've had a good session, you can do more with the fans, I think. That's a, yeah, of course. Autograph sessions are really cool. Um, obviously, we have a heap of fans that line up, sometimes for hours, sometimes for multiple hours, just to get our autograph, which is quite surreal. Oh, thank hug? you. A big hug. Can I get it? Oh. Squeeze it. Oh. She won't break. I meet them at the same round year after year after year, and I've watched kids get older and go from two kids to five kids, and they're spending a lot of money on these tickets. All right, sweetie, I'll see you later. Bye. The least we can do is give back and talk to them for five minutes and, 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 and listen to what, they've, you know, what they're doing in their life with, with their love of supercars. <laughs> tough face. Cross your arm, tough face. You've got you to, like, push your arms out, like... So we've got an interesting lineup here of very fast drivers, very fast cars, separated by very small margins. The qualifying sessions are, you know, we talk all the time about how key they are, and they are. You know, starting at the front of the grid, no matter what race it is, is, is where you want to be. And if history is any guide here, we're set for a thrilling qualifying run this afternoon. Tiny, tiny percentage points of being perfect is something that um, takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of work. A uh, lot of experience and also for the guys that are really, really good at it, they've just got something going on in those brains that uh, make it all click. And it's the most frustrating thing you could ever try and do, is try and look for three or four tenths of a second around a track. Most of the times you take a too big a step and that's the thing that pisses you off. Remember it's the top five is the focus that are looking to progress. They advance to the next portion of qualifying. Di Pasquale's just done a 51 flat. Pretty good lap time straight up. 51 dead. Put yourself in an engineer's shoes. You're trying to organise your troops. You're trying to manage a driver. What's the weather doing? What does the data say? All the information, all the programs that they've got in front of them, alongside working with another engineer who's you know running the other car. Their role cannot be understated. Don't lose the focus, mate. Don't lose the focus, please. Yeah, really good job, mate. Really good job. Being home. Mirko and myself, we, we started off basically our journey in supercars together last year, my rookie season. And to go back into another year together, um, you're just stronger, you sort of understand, you've got all that information from the year before too. What's wrong, man? What's wrong? Hey, that, was that the same, we used the same tyre then, before the new tyre, wasn't it? I had to call you back here because I didn't yeah, have no, time. No. I, was, I was not going to risk that. I can't talk about Mirko without mentioning Anton. So Anton's a unique beast. They come along every decade. Fast, bullish, a lot of self-confidence and can back it up on the track. So you now need an engineer to be able to get the best from that. I think it's really important to have someone like Mirko in your corner who's passionate and basically do almost anything to win. He's just a, a ultra competitive person. Like everything he does in his life is competitive yeah, and... Make sure you've got the, your ties. I'm coming in this lane. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. We have times where we're well and truly completely honest with each other and we, um, we haven't 
um, had any fisticuffs yet, but there's times where I'm sure he's wanted to belt me and there's times I wanted to belt him. And it's a love-hate re relationship, but most of the time we, we end up walking away laughing and smiling, so it's good. I am a big Alistair McVean fan. The guy is one of the smartest heads in the pit lane. That's fact. He's very calm the whole time. It doesn't matter whether it's excitement or it's disappointment. It's, it's the same level. He's very um, structured with the way he does things. Al is just an absolute legend. He's a gentleman of a bloke, super intelligent, super smart. All right, it just went too slow on that extra warm-up lap. Yeah. 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 Do we stay up it on the third? You can do stay up to the first sector and we'll see what it looks like. Fuck it. I'm angry. Yeah. Alistair's very good at reading what Dave wants and Dave's very good at driving the way that Alistair thinks that he should, meaning if there's an area of the track that he doesn't think he's doing a good enough job, Dave's still big enough and bold enough to be able to grab it and drive it the right way. We were just rushing the last corner a little bit too. Am I? Yeah. Well, I'm trying to use so the to... wind to help me turn and then... It's not really working. It's not? No. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right, don't worry about it. Yeah, we should have just not deviated from the plan. What do you want to do in the race? Just pass everyone. And there's nothing as great as when you're down the back of the grid and you drive between every single car to get to the front. You know, it's just an amazing feeling. The race comes up right after the... Go have some fun, champ. Thanks, man. See you at the end. Yeah, all bridging up. Green flag, green flag. It gets underway. 50 laps, 120 kilometres, and a beautiful start by McLaughlin, who immediately closes the gap over Frosty. Great battle going on for third and fourth. Reynolds is fourth. Several lock breaks. Todd Hazel was one of those cars scrambling through turn two. Reynolds on the run to six, and that's passing Fabian Coulthard, so that's up to third now. Dave's a little hungry today. Yeah, he's good. Fabian getting back by Dave. Fabian Coulthard back up to third position. Van Gisbergen's got the pressure being applied to Reynolds. The pit window is open. I need to come in. I need to come in. Okay, let's do it. Thank you, Dave. Hit the board. Go, 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 go. Clear, go. Fly. And just clear now. No good. Sorry about that stop, mate. It'll still be okay. Just move the fast laps for us. Well, the pit stop so he crosses one spot. Anton Di Pasquale and oh. contact. <laughs> He's actually served him up on, on purpose then. Well done, Anton. He's got that pace. Yeah, he is. He's not making it easy. Uh-uh. Hey mate, this is the last lap, the last lap. Last lap, great job mate, bring it over. And that is a great victory. Well done for Scotty McLaughlin, Coulthard Van Gisberg and the first of the Holdens. Next was James Courtney, David Reynolds, Tim Slade, Nick Perkett, Anton Di Pasquale, Chaz Mostert. Same two teams on the podium. Same man. The cream rises to the top. Always. Stop the bromance. <laughs> first top ten for the year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, can it be 10 minutes just after a debrief or you want to run out? I guess this is uh, mitigating circumstances? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess the, the first point is um, the penalty just seems way too harsh for... You know, the, the writing of the rule is is clear that, um, you know, the, the car, when it le from the time it leaves the ground and returns to the ground, the brake lock mechanism must be engaged so as the rear wheels do not rotate without prior approval from the HOM. 
So yeah, our brake lock mechanism did not work. One of the sensors failed, so it didn't activate, but the driver puts the car in neutral anyway, our driver does. So there was no chance the wheels were gonna move anyway. Um, we understand that's not how the rule reads, but the severity of the charge for, it didn't actually compromise anything. There was no safety issue. There was no advantage at all. We got to the end of the race and essentially didn't know that we'd breached the rule. It was good. That's why it's good to go <laughs> I spent a lot of my school years under the honour board. And not because I was honourable. Yeah. Detention. Yeah, I'm used to this position. Always had you had to have your hands behind Put your the hand back. out, get the no, strap. I had to have the hand out, the hands behind here to hide the fact that you just had your hand slapped with a bamboo yeah. cane. A ruler, yeah. No, ours was a bamboo cane. I remember the wooden metre ruler. Mm. Yeah. So after um, getting some evidence together and sort of basically stating our case that it wasn't an intentional error, it wasn't a driver error, it was just a sensor error, we said it was unfair to give a penalty, a time penalty in the race, and we asked for a, a team penalty. Now that's set a precedence for the rest of the year by the look of it that when that happens now, it's going to be a financial penalty, which I think it was 5,000 bucks, and I think it was 35 team points. But that, from now on, that'll be the precedent set. But they were going to give us a 15 second penalty, which would have put us nearly last. Start, start at Reynolds and tell him they doubled it, you know, 30 second penalty. <laughs> yeah, 30 second penalty, they no. doubled it, yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. You, you smile at it. Oh, Dave. Yeah, you did your car too. They doubled the penalty, 30 no, seconds, didn't. yeah. No, they didn't. And they, and they did oh, that. Oh, did you speak to Betty? Yeah. And they did that. Oh, no. You're a terrible poker face. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I was still smile. laughing at you and I, when he walked in. <laughs> oh, maybe now I don't have to go on the grid. They've seen me. This, this place has a very special meaning for me. I was here, I think it was my first or my second Tasmania and I was being interviewed on the grid. And I've only got little short legs, right? So it took me a long time to go all the way down the edge, to go all the way back. By the time I did that, Tim Edwards had put in a um, complaint that I was still on the grid when the last uh, whistle had gone. But I was, but it was because I was being interviewed. And so the next day, which was the Sunday, I got a warning. The next day on the Sunday, I made sure I was off before the last whistle went ran into Tim Edwards' garage and went, she's off the track! Race eight gets underway. Beautiful start by Van Gisbergen. and look at Frosty in the mix here. Shocking start by David Reynolds. He went backwards. They actually made contact, he and Scott McLaughlin too. Come on, Dave, you gotta do better. This is lively. This is going to be three abreast. They bumped in. Anton Di Pasquale, they bumped there with Waters. So David Reynolds has just taken third away from Scott McLaughlin. Well, and he's actually got a margin now. Yeah. Reynolds has gone up to third. Go, Dave. Go, Dave. Go, Dave. Go, Anton. I can't change gears. I've got to come in. I can't change gears. Stay out. Stay on. You can't drive around a fourth Yes, you can. You just got to finish and get points, Dennis. Dude, I'm in the pit lane, mate. I don't know what you don't understand. Uh, the gear lever is in my hand. That was frustrating because we sold a car over Christmas oh, yeah. and um, we got the spare gear lever out of the truck to put in Anton's car and um, it had a different spec bolt and nut on it. Uh, the nut had unwound itself and then the bolt came out of the gear lever, hence why it was in uh, Anton's hand. Yeah, well, running in seventh pretty comfortably, um, so having the failure with the gear lever was uh, quite disappointing. Yeah, I mean, clearly Anton was gutted by the gear shift issue. We did the little piece on it. It was, you know, typically the little 20 cent part. Uh, initial reaction, obviously, was, is Anton all right? Because did, we did see it live and we saw how fast it was. I think everyone felt the same, same disappointment because you sort of, you, you didn't get something which you deserved as a whole team. It's not something that, you know, every mechanic goes in and puts a spanner on a nut on the gear lever because once it's on, it's on and it should never fail. It was so random. 
I, I, I got so furious at myself that something like that happened on my watch. If you can keep on going round and round, at least yeah. it's not a DNF. It's finishing it. Get a bastard, that was looking so good. As a driver, you can't do anything about it. All you can do is go to the next race and just lay one down. Yeah. If you're stuck, stuck in, in gear, gear, just stay just out. Just stay there. out. If it's a high stay gear. Out, stay out, stay out. Yeah. yeah, so they just sent him out. So the reason they want him out there is because he can be classified, he just gets points. So leave it in the gear and just drive it around because whatever it takes to fix it won't be fast. So he's already given away some track position there, but I wonder what gear it's in. He's on the rev limiter now. Not a tall enough <laughs> no, one. No, definitely not the right one. <laughs> Dave gets down the inside. Is it done? Oh, he's right out sideways. Oh, Davey, what are you doing there? No, he'll, he'll take you back. Had a really good crack at second. On the run to turn six. Got past him, but I didn't make it stick, and he got passed back. That is a great exchange with these two. Getting that away. was fabulous. That was really good driving. Reynolds is on for his first podium of the year on these numbers at the moment, so they've done a nice job this weekend at Penrite Racing. And Deep Pasquale has lost 17 positions based on that gear leader issue. First podium of the year for David Reynolds, who slowly but surely has seen his smile return because early in the year he was having a bit of a battle trying to get that car to work together with Alistair McVeigh. Awesome drive, mate. Awesome drive. Welcome back to the podium. Good job. Hey, bro. Good job, champ. Sorry, it should be second. <laughs> Well done, mate. Congratulations. Your first podium for 2019. That's got to be a little bit of a relief. Yeah, it's a big relief. I mean, I had an amazing battle out there with Fabs. Um, yeah, but I wish I'd come second, but just he he got it done. And, mate, it was an awesome job by the team. Matt Mega in the pit stops, and they gave, Penrite Racing gave me a good car, so I'm happy as. Go and enjoy the champagne and the podium. Well done. Awesome. Thanks, man. You know what, David? You have to understand something. What? You are what they call an asset. 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 And people have to look after their assets. Why do you think I look you up and down when every time I see you? Make sure you're all right. <laughs> you're disgusted in me. No, I'm, I am disgusted in you, but I, I still <laughs> love you. It's like when I'm with children, when the children do something bad. Yeah, I, I don't like you today, but I still love you. Does that make sense? Perfect. You ready to go racing? We're here at Todd Road in basically the heart of Melbourne at the go-kart track and we're here to facilitate the Erebus Academy. It's a fantastic program Erebus has set up to like encourage young kids into motorsport and show them how to go about it and to look up to myself and Anton. All your race craft, all your, all your competitive nature, everything sort of, all the stuff you learn as basics always comes from karts. I'm sure most supercar drivers who've done karting say learn everything you know now sort of starts there and then you just sort of grow it and uh, fine tune it as you go up through the ranks. Oh! <laughs> and what kind of tips did you give the kids? I don't know, they're, they're actually a little bit better than us in this car these days. We've sort of, me and Dave, I think, have lost it over the years. Oh, he smoked me. <laughs> yeah. I did. What have I taught the kids? Probably nothing. Um, I haven't driven a go kart for 15 years. So, what's this like? I have my front three. bit, like if you, if you touch or something, you get the camera. Oh, I drop down bumper. Yeah. They're just basically trying to stop people just Ram. 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 ramming. They have Dave as the best carter in Australia by far, so um, he's, he's helping them really well. What did Dave tell you? Did they give you any tips? No. Uh, nah. Nah. <laughs> Try to be really smooth and get on the gas when you feel like you can get on the gas. And did you do that? Uh, yeah. Tried my best. When you think of Phillip Island, you think of three things. Penguins, surf, and one of the best motor racing circuits in the world. Whether you're a MotoGP rider or a supercars driver, it's the favourite. Outside Bathurst, it is the best permanent racetrack in this country by a mile. A lot of the circuit's above 200 k's an hour. I think it's above 60% of the circuit you're turning. It's fast, it's flowing. The mid-corner speeds that any car achieves around there are dazzling. 
I think we should expect something from Everest this weekend. Red, red. <laughs> You're gonna, you're gonna be sent out all weekend now, aren't you? I oh, know. He fucked me. Do not enter. Talon, obviously I'm not allowed in here. Obviously I'm not allowed in here. Over the weekend we have a plethora of media commitments that we have to roll through. Pit tours, paddock club appearance, sponsors appearances. Your signings, corporate appearances, or meet and greets in the garage. And then there's obviously the media commitments too, which that could be TV, radio, any interviews from journos, so it doesn't stop. Although it is a big team sport, there's generally a lot of focus around us as the individual. Anton's easy. He's still new to it. He's only in his second year, whereas Dave's been doing signing sessions and all the other stuff we get him to do for so long. Oh, it's in there somewhere. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. I don't have a pass, I'm sorry. <laughs> don't let him in. Yeah, please, actually, kick me please. out. I'd love please to be kicked out. Sometimes they'll deal with it all well. Sometimes they're not too happy to come along with me, but they get over it and deal with it and probably bitch about it later. <laughs> and what it's going to look like is as fireworks, the car's going to come over the hill and the, you're going to, what you're doing here will come up on the screen. So, so that's what we're filming today. Yeah. Cool. So what I'm going to do, and you've got to just for about 20 seconds. I know. What are you going to do? Music on, give you a bit of a vibe. I'm going to introduce you. And so I basically want you to just you're going to look down the camera and you're just going to do whatever you want, like cross your arms, wave to the crowd. That's why if you've got a glove, like you can put a glove on. Like So you don't have to say anything, you're just looking down the camera and you're just as if someone's introducing you. I'm going to do a fake intro. Yeah, can you feel that? That'd be the stupid, best. Then I'm going to look right. and feel stupid as well. Like, we're all a team uh, here. You see, yeah, I've got two. The only thing is, if you go, you can't go too wide with your hands, exactly. That was scary. <laughs> yeah, eyebrows. That looked like it was your yeah, eyebrows. So just go through a few different things. Here we go. So, I actually don't know why. Are you ready? And introducing. From Ken Ride Racing, he's qualified on competition tonight. It's Anton D. Pasquale. Tim, look at those pearly whites, people. Um, <laughs> That's done. Five seconds, beautiful. Actually good, that. That was good. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna do a fake intro. What are you gonna do? Please What's fix that? your hair. Otherwise, I'm gonna wear a hat. Will you fix it? I can't see my haircut, can I? Oh, yeah, fix it. What's wrong with it? So this morning, just to make sure the focus is on setting up the garage as a priority for everybody apart from number one, number two in each car. Well, Ed and Philip Bond, the biggest thing, the target this year was the success we had last year here. The success Anton had particularly at Tassie because we're now a genuine two car team where we can rely on Anton and his engineer for their feedback to help the cause. 2019, um, going into my second year in the supercars, um, 2018 was awesome. We achieved a lot of good things, but a lot of things we want to improve on. So focusing on them, uh, we've got a really good qualifying speed and capabilities. So we want to transfer that into races and get a lot of top 10s, um, 2019 for sure. 2015, uh, Philip Holland um, was so significant for Dave and, and his overall career because, it, you know, to be in a position where so late in the season you are, uh, you know, an absolute contender uh, for the championship, that was significant because he was really becoming the race driver that uh, we hoped he would be. Looks like Van Gisbergen putting pressure on Reynolds. Reynolds is gone. David Reynolds has gone around. Myself and a bunch of other race drivers, you know, that aren't racing anymore, have all been there. We, we understand what it's like um, to see the goals and the dreams just go poof in one foul swoop. Expecting anything uh, from Shane on that one? What do you mean? As far as an apology? Oh, he's dead to me, bro. He's dead to me. Those moments are, are incredibly significant and they can make and break you and, and I think um, Dave's learnt from that one. 
What's the jungle when you're leaving then? Be interesting, Dave doing the long way. Sorry? Dave's got to go the long way to qualifying now. Yeah, I know. It'll be interesting to see Anton sitting there. I want to see his, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, commentary. No, Anton will be good today. Oh, and look, he's actually surprising me more and more every round, more and more. Well, funny enough, I'm not surprised. Well, I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I I'm thinking he's finally showing his, you know, his true colours. Phillip Island, uh, very different to Tasmania, completely opposite track. Um, it was probably one of my best rounds in 2018. So, always gone good there. So, feeling really confident and it's a track I love. This guy has arrived. Anton Di Pasquale takes his first win and wins the round at Phillip Island. You ripper. So, both your drivers are out of contract. Now, have you decided if you want them, you want to keep them? I haven't decided not to. As far as I'm concerned, they're just going to keep on going. Um, every time Dave signs a contract with me, he reads through it, makes sure everything is... His biggest thing is when we did the last contract, the, what I had to change was that he wanted to stay in the same place that I was staying in at every round. My relationship with Betty is pretty good. Um, she's like my motorsport mother and she's always positive, always treats us really well, always happy. You know, if he does something wrong or if I do something wrong, we talk to each other. And, you know, I'll hit him on the head or go, dude, that's not nice or that was not funny. Uh... His sense of humour can sometimes be not as funny as he thinks. Of course I want to stay here, yeah. Definitely want to stay here. I've got a real... I've, I've watched the team come from nothing to something. And I've been a part of it the long way, along the whole way, so yeah. But you never know. You never know where you're going to end up. In my mind, we just got to sign a piece of paper now. I don't see it as being a big thing. For me, if I chose a driver in the first place, I chose them to stay. If when they want to leave, they can leave. But I also have a policy. If in the middle, you know, if if they're in the middle of contract and they say, Betty, I really. I've got this great chance to do A, B and C and I really want to do it because I think that I'm going to get better. Go! I never hold anyone back. At the end of my last contract at Ford, I never thought I would end up at Erebus at the start of 2015. And I kind of was like a little bit you know, unsure. I'd love it just to keep going as it's going because I honestly think that Dave's still got a, a lot in him. He's frustrated at the moment because his car can't, is not taking him to where he was last year. but. You know, somewhere in the very back of his mind, he's going, oh, look at that car, what I could do in that car. They, they all do it. I mean, every Holden driver must be going, oh, look what I could have done in that car. But that doesn't happen like that. You, you know, when you are the top Holden driver and you've been the top Holden driver for a while, then you can whine and whinge as much as you want. But until you're the top Holden driver consistently, you just got to, you got to beat the rest of the Holdens first and then worry about the Blues. At this stage, we don't see a need to explore any other driver options, but you've always got to keep your options open because you know, someone might try and convince Anton to go somewhere else, and if he gets offered something ridiculous, you know, money-wise, well, we're not going to fight. Uh, you know, we haven't got the biggest checkbook. I did turn around to uh, Ryan's story and said, "Look, if you're going to pinch um, Anton, if you're in now or in five years, you ever want to pinch Anton, come and tell me beforehand." So I got a bit of a heads up, you know. If you ask me personally, I think Anton is a... If you looked at him outside of the team and then looked at him in the team, he's a perfect Penske driver. You know, the hair's quaffed, the, the manners, everything else. You know, unfortunately, he's found a home with... You know, people are not so quaffed. <laughs> I want us to be a team that's going to be better than Penske one day and hopefully Anton can see that we, we can try and match him one day. It's going to be very hard with their backing and and the background, I guess, and their resources. But I want Anton to believe in us and hopefully we can be the team that keep a young driver and see him through to winning a championship and not lose him to a team that's gonna give him a championship, if you know what I mean. It will be what it'll be. They're either gonna sign or they're not gonna sign. I'm gonna have them as drivers or not. It doesn't worry me. You know, the as far as I'm concerned, they both will be with me and they'll both they've both made it well, they haven't said they want to leave, but they, they've made it like, oh yeah, next year we'll do this, this and this. So we've, we talk like nothing's changing. 
It's event four, the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship, the WD40 Phillip Island Super Sprint. We're 140 kilometres southeast of Melbourne. The grid atmosphere is, is enormous, and I, um, I think it's something that uh, probably goes a little bit un, unregistered with the fans and, and everybody because the drivers are essentially getting ready to go to battle and, and get their minds in focus on driving these race cars at their absolute best they can possibly be under all the stresses and strain. The grid is a really unique place to a sport, to our sport. Um, think of tennis, think of football, think of any sport where minutes before you go into the main game, you're surrounded by media, fans, autographs, photographs, interviews. Doesn't happen, right? The time when you get the last minute instructions, people walk away from the car, and the feeling of you being now the only one that has a bearing over the result right now is, is extremely powerful. But I can't think in our land a more extreme sense of, of bravery and commitment and, and desire to get the thing right. Five, four, three, two, one, stop there, stop there. Just do what you need to do, the strategy. If it's a f up, it's a f up. Look, that's what, I'm, from this position, it's a glorious day, a beautiful track. Race 10, 45 laps, 200 k's. The WD-40 Phillip Island Super Sprint is go. Nice jump for Fabian. But McLaughlin's got the inside running, which is critical. And in the secondary part of the start, he pulls clear. Di Pasquale's moved up nicely into third position. And McLaughlin this time round has got a margin on the run to turn two. It's a, the gear, gear position sensor is playing up a bit. It's a bit spiky. So just tell you, it might be a bit inconsistent. It'll work good one time, it might not work good the next. Now, critically, Di Pasquale's in. So let's see what Anton's crew at Penrite Racing can produce for him. Fabian, three and three oh, quarter litres a second on the refuel, and he's now in behind Di Pasquale. Big. That's big yeah. for Di Pasquale. That's a good move. Yeah. Barry Ryan, you're watching this battle intently, but all of a sudden the air's just become quite thick in here. Isn't he concerns over the fuel in Anton's car? Yeah, only because we had a Lambda sensor fail, and with the Lambda control now as the rule, um, when one sensor fails, it can try and protect itself and put a little bit extra fuel in. So we're marginal. Hopefully we're going to be all right, but we're very close. Eight tenths of a second between first and second, 3.9 to Anton Di Pasquale, who's got a question mark over fuel flow in that car at the moment. As you heard Barry Ryan say, better hope that those Ooh. decimal points are in all the right places. Well, Is it at that point or not? We're a litre and a half short on total. But it's... Someone might be here tomorrow if it runs out. One lap remaining, and this could be a very big moment for this young man who's earned his place at the top of the tree in the sport. What's the deal with fuel? We don't paint your fuel, we don't paint your fuel. One lap to go, mate, one lap to go. Push, push, push. Coulthard, McLaughlin, Di Pasquale. Good job, team. That's awesome. And a wonderful moment for everybody at Erebus Motorsport and for Penrite Racing and especially for Anton Di Pasquale. I have no doubt in my mind that there are people going to be offering him a place somewhere else. He's going to be one of the top in our industry. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, it was obviously really good to start off today with fourth in qualifying and then I nailed the start and sort of just to fold the Penske boys for most of the race and uh, obviously the team had a really good strategy. I was, I was in clean air most of the race and uh, it's, it's a credit to them. It's sort of one they deserve, so it's, it's awesome. And third place for Penrite Racing, for the very first time, Anton Di Pasquale. Anton's first buddy in the team was it was a pretty proud moment. Like uh, his number one mechanic that week had some bad family news, and he was in tears. Betty was in tears. Paul was in tears. It was really emotional. I get a little bit emotional talking about it now. But to see him up on that podium and be the fastest Commodore, like the the two Penske Mustangs had, had gone into the distance, and he was staying with them and left every other Commodore in his wake, and that was him. That was all Anton and Mirko, his engineer. That that was just an amazing bit of motorsport for me. When they've been the fastest Holden, or they've finished the weekend as the lead Holden, it's a massive feather in their cap. And if you pop out of a weekend when you could argue that A, you were the quickest, or B, that you've actually been the 
first Holden to finish a particular weekend, it's a bloody good job. I feel like it's my little brother getting a podium for the first time. In, in this team, we're not trying to beat each other. We're trying to work together to beat everyone else, which is quite a different team atmosphere compared to some of the other teams. They're just trying to beat each other to make themselves look better. But this team, we don't. We try not to have an ego, and I think that's that's the best way to move forward. And Dave Reynolds is trying to take advantage down the inside. In fact, the hands on deeper squad. Just hold each other up. Battling with his teammate there. You're the engineer. I fucking told you to do it. Oh, oh shit. Dave. Betty. Fucking hell. Whoa! Contact between the teammates! It was just a waste. Waste of time. Sacked a whole lot of him and start again. He just himself and Anton over.